Hello and welcome to another Character Unlock E3 uh, Spectacular on the home stretch now. We just had Ubisoft and it was by general consensus probably quite good. Agreed Brooks? Yeah man, it, I really liked it. It was, uh, yeah. yeah, that tied my favourite so far this year with, with Bethesda. Yeah, I'm going to put it ahead of Square for my favourites and I think that Sony and Nintendo you know, be interesting to see what they've got coming in the next two. But we'll just crack straight on with Yubi and how they started it. Well, <laughs> uh, that I just, was. I, I just need to go ahead and say, you know what, Yubi, stop fucking around and just get Aisha Tyler back because it ain't the same since Aisha Tyler left. I I need more Girlwood in my life. She stopped doing it since Watch Dogs 1. This I think. Is the, no, this is the second year she hasn't done it. No. Oh, I thought that. I don't remember seeing her since Watch Dogs 1 when she was actually in Watch Dogs 1. No, no. She's she done it. She's she done it a couple of years after that, and then last year was the first year where she wasn't here. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe she'll come back when we stop doing these. Maybe. <laughs> uh, so it started with. Just Dance. Now, I'll be honest, I forgot Just Dance was even a Ubisoft game. How? Or that they, it existed in general. They open the show up with it every year, and every year yeah. it gets more and more, well... Extravagant? Ubi. <laughs> it, <laughs> so, you know, the Notting Hill Carnival plus Pandas this time, so... Yeah. Well, that's the thing, is I was watching it, I was just thinking... I don't know what's going on. I'm just confused. And I think I just blank it from my memory every year because it's just <laughs> gone. But yeah, but the... Just Dance 2019. Pretty much everybody knew that was coming. I don't understand. How does Just Dance even work anymore? There's, there's I, no I don't know. connect does, does, for Xbox. Does and... it use your phone? Uh, actually, it probably does now. I'm pretty sure it uses your phone, but I might be wrong. Yeah. Oh, um, put it on Switch and use the Joy-Con. Yeah. Right. So after the Just Dance Panda Fest, we got another cinematic for Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yeah? You'd... Neither of us have played but, uh, Beyond Good and Evil 1. No. no I, I, I know nothing about Beyond Good and Evil. I don't know if it's good or if it's bad, but Beyond Good and Evil 2 looks fun. Looks it, phenomenal. Yeah, it it looks absolutely gorgeous. It uh, it looks like the kind of game that I could probably get into. And the tiny, tiny, tiny snippet of gameplay they done looked pretty fun. Yeah. But what they uh, they showed off some of the stuff, not just like the fact that it, the game itself, but it's the community that they're trying to build for this. Yeah. Where they've got that um, uh, hit record. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's little pet project, trying to build an entire community's worth of art. Yeah, uh, Hit Record's been around for for ages. Like, I'm pretty yeah. sure his Twitter handle is just like Hit Record Joe. Yeah, probably. It's it's Hit Hit Record's been a long term thing. But yeah, getting him involved in that, I think, is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. But um, back to the the game. I mean, they said they showed off the the main characters to the game, but the, she also mentioned a prequel. Yeah, well, this Beyond Good and Evil Two is a prequel. It's set before Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah, which I found quite hilarious. That it's only just clocked to me that that's actually what it is. That yeah. The second game is before the first one. Good, that isn't it. Yep. But they could have called it Beyond Good and Evil Zero, but then. No one would have been excited about that. True. True. Well, this is where Beyond Good and Evil 3 is going to be a prequel to this one as well. Yeah. It's just going to keep going backwards. Yeah, it's just going to keep going backwards. Eventually, it'll just be babies, space babies. Yep. Beyond Good and Evil 6 will just be space pregnancy. <laughs> Turns out Perfect. Beyond Good and Evil 7 is actually Mass Effect. <laughs> nice. Pretty good. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you have that one. <laughs> It was a one one minor issue, I think. I came from the Ubisoft, well, the Beyond Good and Evil, 
is the uh, the fact that they completely forgot to turn their microphones off when they got off the stage, and you could hear them talking about how they nailed it. At yeah, the they, that happened a couple of times. Bless them. It was, like, <clears throat> it was almost every single person who went off the stage just they just couldn't be asked to turn off their mic. Yeah, clearly first, the the, the first time was funny, but yeah, after that it did get a bit. Yeah, someone sort your audio text out, please. Need someone needs a slap. Yeah. But uh, there's also um, BGE Fest later this year. Yep. Coming in Montpellier. So it's not actually that far away if you want to go, Brooks. By the way. No, I'm I'm, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> I, I I can't imagine for a second me wanting to be at a place like that. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I'm the right. I'm the uh, the guy for that place. So. After Beyond BGE 2, Beyond Good and Evil 2, we had uh, a Rainbow Six Siege, what, um, spot? Yeah. For lack of a better word. No, nothing new coming from it yet. No. But it was just an announcement that they've just clocked 35, was it 35 or 3.5? I can't remember. 35 million. 35 million players. 35 million players. 35 million players. That's a lot of people to go through a game that was pretty much shunned on launch yeah but it has they've UB have supported it well and that was the start of UB really kind of showing like they're looking after their franchises now and you know siege has been looked after very very well you know we've said this a lot yeah. on the podcast before they're not fucking around with this uh this game they've done very well looking after it no, you're right. That that they've put a lot of time and effort into making sure that this game has a long life. And since it's been out, there's now 40 operators and 19 maps. Yeah. I started it and it was like 20 operators and there was only like 10 maps. Yep. So we've come a fair way. Oh yeah. It's definitely it's it's one of those games that I don't think even, I don't think UB as much as they wanted it to be massive. I don't think they knew just how big it was going to get. And uh, it's just getting bigger as well. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a proper it's, esports title. Yeah, because it's got that esports thing and it's you know, it's being looked after like an esports thing and you know, it's being treated well. It's, you know, well deserved and I, I think if UB deserve anything, you know, they uh, props for anything, they deserve it for looking after Siege the way they have. Yeah. I think I'm glad that they carried on with Rainbow Six Siege and they've not gone, oh yeah, we're making a, a new Rainbow Six game. Because they, that would, could have been a pretty big mistake. Yeah. This game is, is making them money in in a massive way. Oh yeah, hand over fist. So we've got that going for them. And, uh, and then we had a guy deciding that he wanted to be cool and ride out on a bike. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> that was amazing. Basically, Captain America's pancake-loving brother. Yep. <laughs> R- riding out on a trials bike, dropping on the floor, and then walking on the stage and, and jumping just, into a, a Just face popping into a TV. Yep. That was great. I, I Genuinely, I laughed, laughed out loud at that. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. It was really well choreographed. It was really funny. <laughs> Yeah, it worked. This is. I love E3, but sometimes these these devs and these publishers can be so po faced about their products. So if you you see them having a bit of a laugh, you can't fault them. I think they've no. done great. Right, it was, a, it was a good choice what they did, and it works brilliantly for trials. Definitely, it look it just it's just part of the game now. Yeah, what he's just done. So it's trials rising is the title yep uh, what we got um more trials yeah just you know, the, trials just looks like the, the game that we all play for an hour then can't go any further so we fuck it off out the window yeah so it's what uh updated graphics new locations you know it, what what could you do with the trials game it just it's, it's it, it does look like it's taken on some of the stuff from like uh, Trials of the Blood Dragon, where like, the environment is part of your your track, like moving trucks and shit. Uh, yeah. All day. Oh, yeah. Mo- 
things that can knock you off. So all they need now is a boulder to be chasing you and go full Crash Bandicoot. It will definitely happen. <laughs> Guarantee it. But yeah, I, but, I was really impressed. I, I quite like Trials. So. Sadly, it comes out on the same day as everything else. It comes out on February 22nd, so I will not be buying it. Yeah, it was, uh, but there's... um. I think one of the things I noticed was that there was a lot of showing to multiplayer. Yeah. So the multi-tracks. But if I remember rightly, the last Trials game I played, there was only four-player multiplayer. Yep. This one looked like it had eight. So, I don't know. Could be quite interesting multiplayer races. But I quite like the fact that they've also got... uh, at the end, when they showed off all of the crashes, I was yeah. actually laughing quite hard at that. I thought, like, showing off all of the, the route, random crashes that are available, like the dude jumping into an electric fence or the, the one riding uh, on the top of the train and then getting nailed by a sign. Yeah. But that was fucking hilarious. And I realized that a Trials Crashes montage is probably going to be a pretty fucking hilarious to watch because it's not me crashing on the 57th attempt of doing the same jump oh, yeah. before turning the game off forever. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what Trials is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited for more Trials. I'll always be excited for more Trials until I play more Trials and then I'll be frustrated with more Trials and turn it off. And then wait for another Trials game to come so you yep. can play the starting levels again. Absolutely. <laughs> uh after Trials, we go for what, The Division 2. Yep. And, you know, that that little video that they put off at the start, right? Mm-hmm. That, that's an announcement video. Yep. Right there. Like, a little girl like doing a little bit of drawing, making a paper airplane, running through a little garden, you know, and then throwing it into the street. You see what's going on. And then it moves further along, and just you're watching it, thinking, "Oh shit!" It starts off with, "Oh, what game's this?" And then this game looks like it could be the division, and then it gets a bit more closer and closer. Yeah, this is definitely the division. Yeah, this this shit's a bit fucking awesome, hardcore. Yeah. And then you get the dude picking up the the help sign. He's got the division's watch on, and then it drags backs out to showing that it's in Washington. That that's an announcement video, right? That showing off. They didn't need to show off anything else apart from that when they first announced the division at this press conference. They shouldn't have bothered with all of the stuff that was on before. They didn't need it before. That would have been a great announcement. Yeah, but I, I mean, you can't take anything away from the videos they showed at Microsoft. I thought because we both said that looked amazing. It looked really good. Yeah. It, it sold it well. It made us want to play it, and it really got us into it. This one done the same. This one showed off a little bit more of that kind of, everybody's chasing this bleak Last of Us, Walking Dead style world at the moment and I'd, I'd, I'll i be honest I'm I'm dubious about worlds that do that because I, I play games to escape I don't want to feel fucking awful for my decisions you know, I'd, <laughs> not every game I play anyway so as long as I get to be the hero, I'm quite sold with the division, and I really like that video. I really like the, uh, you know, showing off the, the new areas. No, no news on the dark zone, which surprised me. Yeah, I assume we're getting a dark zone. Yeah, I think for the way that they showed off towards the end, the the after you finish the story, you get the post game specialization classes. You get the prestige post game prestiging. Yeah, I think that's that's a good feature because it means that the post game is actually different to the main game. You don't have yeah. to worry about what you're doing. You don't have to go, oh shit, I need to play the whole main game like this because the main game is fake, gives me this type of enemies, and then and then you're fucked for the post game because you've not focused entirely on what you're going to do for when you're like having to do the difficult stuff yeah. after the game. So having prestige picking your a separate class means that you can go oh i can do this because this is how i like to play and then when the post game comes along and it's like i need to do this because this is actually how i do damage yeah yeah now it's uh, it does look very good i i'm 
curious as to what it does. I'm interested to what it does. I will possibly pick it up. Depends on how I'm feeling at the time and what else I'm playing, but I'm definitely interested. Yeah. Um, the announcement with it is that there's eight man raids. Yep. So I, 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 th- th- I thought there were raids in the division already. So did I, to be fair. I honestly thought that there were raids, but I'm guessing they're just gonna they're calling them something else. Every day's a school day, I suppose. Yeah. So what I thought were raids in the division one turns out weren't raids, and there's actually different raids now. No. Yeah. But uh, the other announcement was that the first three bits of DLC, so the year one DLC, it's definitely free. I don't know if they're going to go further than that for free DLC, but you buy the game, you get all of year one DLC for free. Yeah, uh, I think that's good, as long as they don't try and you know microtransaction the shit out of you because they're giving you DLC for free. Uh, other games they've announced today pr- probably won't get free DLC. The Division... I would say the division probably does because it's like a persistent online world type thing, isn't it? So it yeah, it's difficult to charge people, people when you. Yeah, I mean, if yes, there's a case, there's no real need for buying the DLC or having the DLC because you just don't do the extra DLC content. So yeah. I don't even know what the, the there will just be different areas. You just yeah. can't go into them basically. But one of the things that I. That's, annoying about Destiny as a comparison is that if you don't have the DLC then you can't play certain activities Yeah, and the DLC isn't free which makes it annoying if you have a friend who doesn't want to pay for it for instance yeah. but all of the DLC being free means that there's no lockdown on any of the stuff yeah which would be why they're doing it yeah makes it easier for them technically yeah so, and a little little quick jump through this one onto a Mario Rabbids concert. That was fun. It was. That was fun. I, I'm I'm all for you know, especially metal. I'm all for live metal at all of these conferences. You know, Andrew WK last night. Uh, fuck, I've forgotten what they're called because that's like a orchestra. Crit- critical hit. Critical hit. Thank you. Yeah, because. Yeah, I, th- I thought they were great. I thought it worked really well. Yeah, man. Yeah. And Donkey Kong I, Coming to Rabbids, the game that I've owned since I owned the Switch and still haven't fucking played. Wow. Dude, you should be playing that. I should be when, playing everything I own. I just I don't have the fucking time. Get DK and then and then play Mario Rabbids. Yeah. They're, are they going to charge me for Donkey Kong? It's free for season pass owners, but I don't know what else is in the season pass. I thought this was the first bit of DLC, was Donkey Kong. Right. So that's why I'm confused why there's a season pass. So yeah, they will definitely be uh, charging me for that then. I want to know what else is in the season pass now. I Might have know. to look that up later. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, the little quick concert from Crickle Hit, showing off Donkey Kong in uh, Mario Rabbids. Yeah. It's just a little nice thing. And then we go on to the uh, Guy Ritchie masterpiece that is Skull and Bones. <laughs> that really, that looks awesome. It does. It looks so good. It looks like what Sea of Thieves wanted to be. It looks like, yeah, I I wasn't sure last year when we saw it. I thought it looked like fun, but I wasn't sure. And just watching that gameplay today, if it plays like that when I play it, absolutely, I'm all in. That looks really cool. It it looked it's see if thieves should have been this, but they went for humour and that didn't work. But this is um Assassin's Creed Black Flag meets well every other Ubisoft game that there is. Well yes, yeah, but it's it's Ubisoft Pirates. It's the it's yeah. the pirate bit from A C three and A C four and Rogue and all of those it's put into one game and hopefully uh, not fixed but tweaked and improved to a point where it can be its own game because it basically yeah. was in Assassin's Creed 4 it basically it was the majority you know, well, not, well not the majority but it was a large portion of the gameplay was this sea based nonsense so yeah. I'm, I'm actually kind of hoping that 
it does play as well as the sea based nonsense did in yeah. Assassin's Creed because it was really good and it was fun. A full on pirate game means that there's no real need to go to land, so it's a large, mostly going to be on open water. But the way that it seemed to be is that it's a big multiplayer game, but yeah. it doesn't. It's not what Sea of Thieves is. It's you are in control of a crew on your ship rather yeah. than being a crew together, which is, I think, what's going to cause this to work a lot better than Sea of Thieves yeah. because I think the you don't have stuff, to rely on other people doing their job perfectly yeah. every time. My play stuff, it'll be you and your mates in their own ships, not all of you wanting to be the fucking captain on one ship. Yeah. Yeah, so, which is what it should be. That's what I thought Sea of Thieves was until I actually saw it in action. So, well, that's never going to fucking work. People don't want to play like that. No. Everyone's doing it for themselves. Yeah. But we're going to have more from this game. I mean, it's probably going to be more from Gamescom because this game is what, coming out next year? I think it said next year, yeah. You can sign up for the beta for it now. Yeah. Uh, which I may have done while we were watching the conference. <laughs> but it looks like it's... Because they showed off different ship classes as well. Yeah. So they had special abilities with each other. So you can anchor down and just go into siege mode on one of them and just like constant cannon barrage and then others have got ramming equipment and, I don't know, eight front-facing cannons for some reason? Yeah, why know. not, man? Bring just, it on. Just cannons everywhere and mortars and rockets and all sorts of bullshit, but it's... We're going to end up with, like, similar to what Sea of Thieves has with the, the Megalodon Shark where you just, like, team up together. Yeah. But big groups of you team up to do big uh, things. We're going to have... There's going to be, like, uh, the elite ships from, like, Black Flag, the, the, the ones in each of the corners of the map. Yeah. We're looking at massive sailing fortresses. We're going to have things like that, and it's going to be you and three others, or you and um, five others to make a team of six. Yeah. Up against this ridiculous warship, which is going to be, like... The armor made entirely of concrete, yet it still floats. Yeah. And it's got cannons that fire smaller cannons at you that are also firing smaller cannons type job. Yeah. All the cannons. I want more yeah. cannons. <laughs> and then there's going to be another one which is somehow going to be in like a, a modern day battleship. Yeah. <laughs> or a submarine or something. Yeah. But stuff like that is going to be fucking awesome. Oh yeah, it's going to be amazing. I I really I uh, I said uh, I'm all in for this. I I will definitely pick this bad boy up and give it a go because it looks phenomenal. It looks like it can. It's going to work in single player as well. Yeah. Which is the important thing. Which is why I I you're going to like it obviously yep. because you you don't have the time to play co-op multiplayer all the time. No. If the game's going to have a fun single player, okay, yeah, maybe you'll struggle a little bit with, uh, you know, if a pirate hunter comes along, like in that one, where they showed off evening the odds by having four against one. Yeah. But if that, if you need to help, you can always call on me, Brooks. Exactly. I'll just give you a shout and you can come join me. Yeah. That's half exactly. the fun. As long as the load times are quick. Yeah. Um, and then, and then Elijah Wood came out. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, and he showed again. He showed off a game that he showed off last year at E3 as well. Which, yeah. Uh, obviously, last year was the whole. It was a massive push for VR. So every you know everyone needed a VR game they could show off. Yep. And you being Elijah Wood showed this off. And it looks, transference. Transference. It looks interesting, though. I have to say, it looks creepy. It looks like it could be quite scary. Uh, it looks like it looks like it could be a lot of fun. It does look like the kind of thing that it looks like. I'm playing David Fincher's The Game, and I'm definitely up for that. Yeah. 
So it's what a psychological thriller game yeah. Yeah. where you transfer consciousness into other people, or at least that's how they described it. Yeah, it looks like it. You'd, what's the tagline? Like? Escape a corrupt mind. Yeah. So, don't know. Could mean anything, but I'm I'm really excited. It looks fun. It looks a lot of fun. But one thing on during the uh, little video segment that they had for it, there's one one line that stood out to me, which was when I'm assuming the son's mother came over in his mind and said, um, "Don't believe his lies." Yeah. See, there's things like that, right, that make me really interested, but at the same time too scared to play it. <laughs> See, that's the kind of shit that just makes me really want to play it. But yeah, yeah. I, I can't wait to see how that plays out. It, it it sounds amazing, but I probably won't play it on the grounds that I, I like I said, I'll be too scared probably to play it. <laughs> but when we get more information about it, can make better decisions. Yeah. And then we had Starlink uh, Battle for Atlas, which... Was that a Toys to Life game? I think so. Which makes me think that it's going to be really expensive because you're going to be buying a ship and then you're going to be buying a load of different upgrades to plug into your ship to change stuff on your game in the game. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm not interested in a, in a Toys to Life game. I'm just... Too much money, too much time to, uh, to invest in these things. I'm just... I'm not. I'm not investing time in Toys to Life. Especially if you're going to be buying on the Switch, which is going to be like a £50 game. Yeah. And then you're going to be spending like what, another 100 and something on a, a toy spaceship Yep. to go with it. I'm not doing it. I'm not interested. I don't care how many Star Foxes you put in this fucking game. And, <laughs> you know, let's get it right. Star Fox being in, you know, an, another Nintendo character being in another Ubisoft game is yeah. fucking brilliant. And I, I think it's a really good deal for both Ubi and for Nintendo, but I'm not playing a Toys to Life game. I like the way that they announced it. Yeah. Because it, it was, uh, she was talking talking on the radio and it was the audio from like the original Star Wing, Star Fox game Yeah. Of it sounded like um, Slippy coming over the radio and as soon as I heard that I was like that sounds like Slippy and then they just showed off Star Fox and I was like just my mouth agape, I just I had nothing yeah yeah, it's pretty much yeah. how I was as well. I literally my only response was, "Holy fuck, what the hell is going on here?" I yep. was, uh, yeah, I was really impressed. I liked it. I liked it a lot. And then me and my motor son just happened to be in the crowd. I love that dude. He just always looks <laughs> so happy. Yeah. Every, um, every game developer, every publisher should just want to be me and Moto because that dude is just—he just looks so happy to be making games. Oh yeah, everybody loves Miyamoto. He loves the community. He loves everything. Or at least that's how it appears. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just permanent grin on his face. And he just he gets everything from everyone. Yeah. I don't he probably doesn't even know what money is anymore because he doesn't ever use it. No. <laughs> lives on free ship. Just like turns up at places, and then just everyone just like gives him their their firstborn son. Yep, as they should. Yeah. Um, and then from from that there was uh, the dude from For Honor coming out talking about how For Honor is a big game, which is just getting bigger. Okay, got, so uh, by big do they just mean bloated shit? Yeah, I think so. Because I've played For Honor, I didn't enjoy it. As if I was bored. Yeah, it's just, there's a lot to do, but I think, because I picked it up on one of the free weekends, it was also, you know, the game's been out for a while, so there's loads of people playing it, but they're all 
have been playing it since day one because the only reason that people are playing it now is because they've owned it since day one and they, they like it. Yeah. It's, it's not a game that you can pick up six to 20 months later. No. And no, just assume that you can play it because it's just not going to work. No. But apparently there's a the starter pack is free for a week on PC. Yeah. Whatever that it, means. The, well, it, it's starter pack means minimal characters. You'll definitely need to spend some money to do something. Yeah. Uh, only on you play. Yeah. So it's for PC only. Yeah. And there's a, an expansion pack coming soon. Cool. I don't know. Marching fire. I was gonna say flaming march. That's that's gay pride though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Just fuck's sake, Brooks. <laughs> I know you're tired. <laughs> I should not be allowed to talk to people. No, no, you shouldn't. You should apologize. No. But uh, Marching Fire, uh, which is going to be the uh, uh, China coming to town. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, when I was watching it, I was kind of half expecting them to go, we're just teaming up with the guys from Dynasty Warriors now. <laughs> yeah, that would have, well, probably would have been an announcement worth talking about at that point. Yeah. So, basically just the next Dynasty Warriors game is going to be um, based in the For Honor style of combat instead of you are just running around smashing everything to the fuck. Yeah. Instead you actually have to take a bit more care in your fight. <laughs> but For Honor is literally just shit Dynasty Warriors. Yep. Like, really shit Dynasty Warriors. That's the only way I can advertise it. That's yeah. better than any advertising newbie have ever given it. <laughs> I suppose. Um, and then we get, what, The Crew 2, which is coming out in, like, five weeks, yeah. if that. So I don't know why they... They, they put that into the E3 conference. Well, luckily, they didn't spend much time on it, so yeah, quick chat and an advert, and please come preload the open beta. Yeah. Don't bother, it's crap. No. Nah. But they've got a, a Red Bull deal, I saw. Yeah. Because they've got the Red Bull F1 car, all of the Red Bull X fighter planes, at yeah. least one of the Red Bull bikes, and two rally cars, that the Red Bull branded ones, so... Red Bull have certainly given them some money. Yeah. But yeah, game in general. I didn't like it. I thought it was rubbish. What I played of it was pants. So, no, not interested. Did almost all of the games that they showed off have beta registration at the end of it? I'm pretty sure uh, they did. A couple. Trials did. Skull and Bones did. The crew has had a beta open for a little while. So, technically, yeah, I suppose. But it's been open for a bit. Yeah. Um, and finally, we got Assassin's Creed Sparta Edition, or Odyssey to the Initiated. There, there was something about that opening video they showed. It just didn't sit right with me. No. And I still don't know what it is because the more I watched, the more excited I got. Uh, and when they said things like, you know full role-playing experience. I was like, oh, fuck. But then yep. they showed the menus that you use. I was like, well, this looks exactly the same as Origins, so it can be a bit complicated, but yeah, I'm okay with that because I've played that. It's not that bad. By the time we got to the end of that presentation, I really, I was excited and I really can't wait to play it, but yeah, there was something about it just didn't sit right with me at all. No, I, I get where you're coming from, because when I was watching the presentation for it, I was looking at it going, uh, this seems a little bit too much for Assassin's Creed. There's, okay, so yeah, we've got, she she killed a dude, and she picked his helmet off his corpse and put it on, and I was like, okay, maybe changing outfits based entirely on the, no longer it's no longer about appearance, it's about what it does for you now, yeah. which... That's that's my only pet peeve with with RPGs that do that is that oh yeah you can have this piece of armor because it's really good at I don't know it gives you an extra plus ten 
damage resistance and immunity to ranged attacks and yeah. other interesting stuff. But it looks like a floppy dildo on your head. Yep. But yeah, which, which is kind of my worry with Assassin's Creed, honestly. But yeah, it looks good. The combat looks good. The combat in Origins is is amazing. It's fluid. It's just, it's fun. You feel like you can win, and it doesn't. But it doesn't feel crap like previous Assassin's Creed games. So more of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I am. I am. 100% pumped for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And you get to pick your gender. Yeah, and you get to stick with it as well this time, because obviously you got to pick and, and play as Jacob or Evie in Syndicate, but they're, you automatically change depending on what mission you were doing. You, you mean you got to pick Evie or be forced to play as Jacob? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, to... Yeah, Pick playing as a female assassin and stick with it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so there's... You know what, when they showed off the names, I was half expecting off they showed off Alexios for the female character to be Alexias. <clears throat> yeah, that, that they would have gotten some shit for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Calling her uh, Cassandra as well. And I really liked that they showed off the gameplay that they did as Cassandra. Yeah. Because they could have could have definitely been a bit iffy if they'd shown it off here you can be the woman but we will still show you off the bloke doing it yeah at least showing off the woman in action makes it seem like because let's be honest this is ancient greece right there aren't that many badass women in combat no so it did seem a little bit off to be showing off uh, a game where you can pick to be a woman or a bloke and yeah. then to show off the gameplay as the bloke and go, well, we were going to show you the woman, but, you know, reasons. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it looks really good. It's I'm curious to see, because all the footage they showed, there's not much in the way of, like, big buildings to climb and shit, so, which kind of takes away from Assassin's Creed a little bit. But we'll see. We'll see. It looks good. It looks fun. It's Assassin's Creed. I, I was always going to fucking buy it. And conversation trees. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least getting, getting to choose what it is that you say in the conversation. Yeah, com- yeah Make- conversation trees, conversation wheels, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, I... So if they actually change the game somehow, great. If there's no point, don't force me to interact with the scene. Just let the scene fucking play out. Yeah. Well, it's a if there is a conversation wheel, it depends entirely... It means that the game's going to need to be played multiple times, in theory, to get different different conversation. You're going to have to do certain bits. But at the same time, you're going to get different conversation entirely based on whether you picked being Alexios or Cassandra. Yeah, well, you would think so, wouldn't you? Because the world's going to interact with you differently depending on whether you're a bloke or a woman. Or at least it should. Well, it should, yeah, but... Let's let's not give them too much credit yet. Well, considering when he uh, when Cassandra was talking to the Spartan and I've forgotten the woman's name. Yeah, I don't know. It was something really weird. Uh, but one of I did notice that the conversation tree was, "Are you guys together?" Yeah. Which made me kind of think that maybe the conversation wheel doesn't change. No, probably not. I, I, because, I wouldn't have thought it did. No, because that would clearly be Alexios trying to flirt with whatever her name was. Yeah. Or him. Yeah. The same way that for Cassandra it's probably a flirt. Yeah. But I, I think but in general... You I never think, know these things. No, you don't. But I, th- I do think it looks good. I, I think it's... Uh, so I think everything's coming back from Origins, so that the... the ship gameplay because there was a little bit of that in Origins I think it's all coming back and I think it's going to be fun I think it's going to be more Origins I, maybe I missed it I didn't hear them say oh we've been working on this for two years it does look like reskinned Origins it really looks like reskinned Origins so I, yeah. I would be curious to know how long they've actually spent working on it but I don't care that much I will you know I'll still be picking it up 
I need to play Origins. And depending on how much this game falls into the this is what happened at the end of Origins, so now this is the next game in the series, or if this is no almost no basis to it because it's set some time later. Yeah, you'd have to wait till, probably wait till the game comes out. But I, yeah. They have said that the guys from Origins aren't going to be in it. Yeah, so, which is an, enough for me to go, you know what, I don't need to play Origins. Well, Origins is genuinely a very good game. Yes, but I, despite the fact that I have it installed, it's a very big game, and I don't have a lot of time. I know that feeling. I I haven't finished Origins yet. <laughs> I will give it a, a bash, just to give it a bit of play, because yeah. it, clear, it it needs to be played. I mean, I played Rogue shortly, but then I just didn't enjoy it, so... But Rogue, that Rogue's a very different game. Yeah. But with that bombshell and the end of the Ubisoft conference, that's us done for Ubisoft. So if you want to keep following us on Twitter with the Character Unlock account, we will be back in about two hours on Twitter for the PlayStation uh, conference. And we'll be back in a, probably about four hours with another recording of yeah. us talking over what happened with the Sony conference. Yeah. So we'll see you then. 